Hi everybody, a very warm welcome to the Franklin Temple Investments Facebook Live. As some of you may be aware, this is an ongoing series of Facebook Live sessions that we have been doing on the topic of ELSS. ELSS stands for Equity Link Saving Schemes, which is a tax saving instrument which is offered by mutual funds. Prior to this particular Facebook Live session, we have already conducted two more Facebook Live sessions on the very topic of ELSS with Sadish Prabhu. For those of you who have missed it, you can view the recorded versions by logging on to our website www.askwhatelse.com where else is spelt as ELSS. I repeat the URL of the website is www.askwhatelss.com. You can visit the site and you can visit and, and figure out what both these prior webinars were all about and go through them. Coming to this particular Facebook live session, I have with me Satish Prabhu once again to address our queries. Thank you so much Satish for taking time out and being a part of this. Without any further delay, I'll jump into the first question that we have for this session. Why must a person consider ELSS as a tax saving option and what are the core benefits of ELSS as a category? So I would put it this way that ELSS is a relatively newer tax saving instrument. What you had earlier were traditional tax saving options. By traditional, I mean they offer assured returns. Right. They have the rack rates, uh, you know. So, for example, if I name the instruments, you have, say, bank FDs, which offer X rate of return. You have a national saving certificate. You have a public provident fund uh, and many others. Coming to equity linked options, which is the ELSS, they do not offer you assured returns. So they offer you market linked returns. Now why will somebody go to market linked returns when you get assured returns? So the reason is that assured returns are falling. Right. So if you look at uh, the good old days, maybe in the 90s, uh, our parents used to enjoy you know, double digit returns and they were never looking anywhere else for their investments. Right. They thought that 12 and 14% is really good. Why should I look at anything else? But uh, come today and typically assured returns products are giving you 8 and 9% and almost, you know, every week you hear some bank saying that I have dropped my fixed deposit rate. Absolutely. Uh, recently you had the EPFO, which is, you know, the organization where uh, our monthly contributions to the provident fund goes. They dropped their rate from 8.8% to 8.65%. Oh. Okay. So you find that these rates are falling and uh, they are likely to fall further. So as an economy progresses, generally the interest rates come down because you need uh, cheaper capital for industry to flourish. Right. And that's very natural. And going forward, if interest rates are going to fall, uh, how do I achieve my goals? Because I cannot invest in products which offer lower interest rates and achieve and expect my goals also to be met. Right. So for that, you need products which can give you, give you returns, uh, which can give you higher returns and uh, which can also help you meet your goals. So equities have that potential to offer higher returns. Right. Because uh, if you look at, say, um, today India's GDP growth, which is, say, 7, 7.5%, 7 add another 4 or 5% of inflation, typically you'll have a 12% growth uh, of the GDP. And uh, how does it grow is because of the industry, the companies, etc. And all this growth moves to equities because right. you know uh, you get a share of the profits. And if GDP growth can move to equities, which is around 12%, that's a good enough uh, return mm -hmm. for somebody who is investing. But the person needs to take some bit of risk because equities are not short term instruments. You need to be there for some time. And in the short run, there is some volatility or fluctuation in returns in equities. So that is the only catch that if people are willing to take that short term risk and stay invested for long, they can get good returns. And this is proven. Right. So you have equity products which have given good enough returns over the long run. Right. And returns in equities are less volatile. Uh, you know, the uh, in the longer holding period and more volatile in the short term. That's why you need a holding period. And that's why I feel that ELSS uh, is a good tax saving product because it not only helps you save tax, it also helps you create wealth in the long run vis-a-vis -vis your Absolutely. traditional uh, products. Absolutely. 
Uh, Satish, how much tax is actually saved when somebody invests 1.5 lakh rupees under Section 80C in a tax saving instrument? So it uh, totally depends on which tax bracket you fall under. So right. if somebody falls in the 30% tax bracket, you save something uh, slightly more than 45,000 rupees. Right. So which is which is a good amount to save. So if you hadn't saved that one and a half lakh, you end up paying 45,000 as tax. All right. If somebody is in the 20% tax bracket, the saving would be around 30,000. 30,000. So that's how it works. But it is very important to save because otherwise you end up paying that tax. Right. So and once you pay that, you don't even get any returns from that. So here you save, uh, you get the tax saving, which Correct. is which is like additional income. And plus you get the returns from that investment that you've done. So if you've invested one and a half lakh, you also get returns for that one and a half lakh. Plus you end up saving 45,000 rupees every year if right. you're in the 30% tax bracket. So that's why I feel that, uh, you know, section 80C, it's, it's, it's an important section where people need to save. Absolutely. Uh, that brings me to the next question, which in fact, quite a few people have asked this question, Satish, you know. They are saying in case they want to invest in ELSS, should they do it as a one-time investment or should they do it via systematic investment plan or SIP as it's called in popular parlance? So let me first tell you how SIP is different from a lump sum or sure. why SIP is different from a lump sum. So clearly SIP as you rightly said is regular investment. The popular frequency is monthly. Right. So if I want to save one and a half lakhs today uh, over the next 12 months, uh, I end up saving around 12 and a half thousand Correct. every month. Okay. If I invest that in an SIP, it will invest 12 and a half thousand rupees every month in, in the ELSS. Now, why is this better? As I told you earlier, the market fluctuates. Now, right. what happens is if you invest at one point of time uh, and the market at that point of time is on the higher side, you end up getting lesser number of Units. units. So when the markets are high, you end up getting lesser number of units because you pay more money to buy each unit. Correct. Okay, so you'll get lesser number of units because your amount is twelve and a half thousand. Right. But the moment <coughs> the markets are on the low or they are on the lower side, you end up getting more units because you you pay less for every unit. Right. So net net, you should get more number of units. That's what you would like to have. So, but it's not possible to invest every time or time the market and invest at the low. Right. So, you, you cannot time the market. So, what do you do? You invest regularly. Right. And you end up buying at all the points. So, you end up buying when the markets are high and you end up also buying when the markets are low. Right. So, that's the advantage of a SIP because it averages out your unit cost absolutely and you end up buying more units when the markets are low and you end up buying less units when the markets are high right that's the reason and you end up buying across the market cycle so you don't buy at the wrong point but you buy at all the points Got so it. that helps you average out that's why it's always better to be in a sip than in a lump sum because lump sum is like you are investing at one point of time and if that point is wrong you cannot take it back. Correct. Absolutely. So, so that's the reason people should look at an SIP rather than a lump sum. Absolutely. So Satish, now that you know we are on this particular point, SIP or whether a lump sum investment, right? Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about the ELSS offering from Franklin Templeton, which is called the Franklin India Tax Shield Fund. Could you throw light on that particular scheme? So Franklin India Tax Shield, which is the ELSS uh, offering from Franklin Templeton, is one of the oldest uh, among ELSS offerings right. uh, in the industry. It was launched in April 99, so uh, it has effectively a 17 year uh, plus history. It has also got a good dividend track record, so it has been paying dividends since uh, 2000. Uh, the, it is a well diversified uh, fund. Uh, the benchmark for the fund is the Nifty 500. So uh, it has a good track record. And if I can share you uh, the sure. returns that the fund has offered. So if, if I look at a three year period, which is the lock in period, uh, in a three year period, the fund has given 19.58% returns. Okay, 
vis a vis the benchmark which is the nifty 500 it has given 12.42 percent returns uh, and if you want the amounts that if you had invested 10000 rupees you would have got 17099 over a 3 year period which is 7000 more than what you invested right and if you had invested in the benchmark you would have ended up getting 14208 rupees so this is a comparison of the returns and if uh, you had invested 10000 rupees at the inception of the fund that is in april 99 you would have today got 437000 okay so that's effectively 43 times or slightly right. above 43 times uh, the money you had invested at that point of time so you end up getting and the returns uh, are around 23.75% which is which is a pretty decent yeah. uh, return to get and if you look at the benchmark the benchmark has given around 13.9% and uh, in value terms it's around slightly above a lakh so where is 1 lakh and where is 4 lakh 37000 so you ended up getting four times more than the index over the lifetime of the fund got it so the fund has definitely you know uh, performed well over its investment horizon right absolutely uh, also for the benefit of all those who are watching this session right you can get complete information and all the relevant details about Franklin India Tax Shield Fund by visiting this particular website www.askwhatelss.com is www.askwhatelss.com you can read about the fund in detail you can go through the presentation and if you still have any queries you can always write back to us using our social media handles and in our next Facebook live Satish can pick them up right Satish I, I, I believe uh, very very genuinely that this is a very interesting question from a young gentleman right he says that he is going to be working for the next 35 years and he wants your advice that if for the entire 35 years that he's going to be working if he invests 1.5 lakh under section ATC every year for 35 years in ELSS right what are the benefits for him I, I personally feel he's got a lovely amount of time for which he can you know hold that money because that's a considerable duration what is your advice to the young man so very noble thoughts and uh, as i said earlier the longer you invest in equities the better so for two reasons one is equities have the potential to give you higher returns two the compounding effect you know works very well right you know the long uh, over a longer horizon so if you look at uh, say an SIP right so I don't have no ELSS fund would have a 35 year history so we'll have to use some uh, hypothesis in right there. but if I look at only uh, an SIP in the Franklin India tax sheet for, since the time of inception which is almost uh, you know just about 17 years right uh, the SIP in the fund has given 20.19 percent returns vis-a-vis -vis the index which has given 13.36 okay now, if I had invested, uh, I had invested say 10,000 rupees a month, I would have invested over that 17 year period, 21 lakh 30,000, right. okay, that is my principle. Now the fund would have returned, basis this 20.19%, the fund would have returned 1 crore 65 lakhs 56,000, which is a very tidy amount right. for a principal invested of 21 lakhs vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis this the the index would have returned almost 71 lakhs so look at 71 lakhs and look at uh, sorry the index would have returned 79.53 79.53 lakhs vis-a-vis -vis the fund which has returned 1 crore 65 lakhs plus so which is which is a decent amount to get after a longer right. holding period now coming to the 35 year uh, you know uh, holding period that uh, the gentleman wants to have so i i make an hypothesis that suppose this fund doesn't return 20% okay and the fund returns 12% okay uh, so i'm being a bit conservative and saying right. that the fund returns only 12% and you had invested uh, 12500 rupees so you invest your entire 150000 for 35 years Absolutely. so every year you invest 12500 rupees per month 
adding up to 1 lakh 50 thousand and do it continuously for 35 years you know what the amount is going to be at the end of 35 years Tell the me. amount is 8 crore 8 crores 8 crores that is the amount that you will you can make if you invest at 12 percent and this fund has given 20 percent so i'm being conservative even if the fund gave 10 percent for the same investment right you would have got 5 crore so equities over the long run helps you compound so these numbers are hypothetical right so it's only for illustration but to prove a point that longer the investment horizon better and i would like more people you know to take longer investment horizons absolutely and invest in equity funds so elss or other equity funds equities always work better in the longer horizon i'm really jealous of what this young man's actually going to achieve if he if he does land up you know taking your advice yeah. the kind of numbers i've heard 8 crores 5 crores you know really makes me wish that i were actually as smart as this young man but whoever you are, i think that's that's a lovely question you know and the, and the numbers talk for itself right satish we have one question that a lot of people have again you know kind of said that you know we are most of the people are saying elss ppf not much of difference both give you tax free uh, returns and you know both they, they kind of think that both are the same what are your views on it you know why do people think that elss and ppf are the same what are your views on that so the comparison comes because ppf is a tax free instrument right so in in investment parlance it is called triple e okay so uh, at the point of investment you are exempt from tax because you get benefits under section 80c while you invest so any returns that you get any so for example ppf any interest that you get during your investment right is also tax free right and the redemption proceeds that you get after 15 years in a ppf is also tax free so at all three stages which is at investment during investment and post investment you get a completely tax exempt instrument right, okay. right. so that's ppf come to elss it also offer a similar structure right because elss is exempt at the point of investment because you make uh, uh, an investment to get say a section 80c Absolutely. benefit during investment if you get all the dividends that you get for ELSS are also tax free and if you redeem ELSS after say the even the lock in period for that matter which is 3 years even those proceeds are tax free got it so ELSS and PPF are on the same lines same as far lines. as tax treatment is concerned but the more important point as i highlighted earlier is the returns right so if you look at assured returns products the returns are sloping down right whereas equities for that matter have got a better potential uh, of returns so that's why you know though tax treatment is the same elss has the potential to provide you better, better. wealth creation opportunities vis-a-vis -a, -vis a ppf again another difference is that elss has only a 3 year lock in period whereas ppf has got a 15 year, year. lock in period so these are some subtle difference sure sure so Satish, you know, so we've been hearing about ELSS and tax and obviously that's the topic, you know, but, but this particular question actually stands out and I, I take personal interest in knowing this, you know, what are the other tax benefits in ELSS available under ATC? So, clearly these benefits are the triple E right. that I explained. So, besides section ATC, uh, your ELSS provides uh, nil tax for all the dividends that you get. Right any returns that one gets from elss right uh, after the 3 year lock in period is also tax free got it so technically for uh, an equity instrument uh, your uh, returns after 1 year are tax free but since elss has got a 3 year lock in period the returns after 3 years are tax free dividends are tax free so these are the additional, additional. tax benefits that one gets in elss vis-a-vis -vis, uh, you know uh, other uh, tax saving right. surely seems to be like a true win-win scenario for Absolutely. everybody who's kind of making the yeah. right decision right uh, that brings us to the next question you know uh, it's pretty interesting you know uh, this person actually says that assume that i have already invested under atc i have exhausted my one and a half lakh limit 
can I still invest in ELSS and if so, why? So maybe I think he or she is not looking at a very precise tax saving alternative, but at a generic level beyond tax saving seems to be interested in investing in ELSS. So there is no harm in investing, you know, beyond your uh, right. tax saving. So uh, one is, you know, when you look at investment as an instrument, as an investment. Right. And the second part is when you look at an investment as a tax saving uh, instrument. Right. So what's the reason for, you know, tax saving? So you save one and a half lakhs and you save tax. Anything beyond that, you have to look at it from an investment perspective as well. So Correct. if you're not going to get that ATC benefit, are you getting the investment benefit? If the answer is yes, then you can definitely go ahead. And as I mentioned, equity linked instruments have the potential to provide higher returns. Right. And generally, the holding period in equities should be at least five years and longer the better. Right. So if you hold it for 10 years, and I've already given you an example of yeah. the since inception returns of uh, ELSS. So just to quote, Another number to say the question that came uh, under PPF, if say the PPF interest averages around 8% right. say over the next 15 years, again hypothetical Absolutely. just to illustrate a point, you would get, you would make an amount of 43 lakhs uh, from ELSS, uh, from PPF over this 15 year period right. by investing 12 and a half thousand rupees every month uh, to make it one and a half lakh per year. Per year for the next 15 years. If you invest the same amount, 12,500 in say an equity instrument, which right. is offering you 12%, you end up making 63 lakhs over right. that 15 year period. Got it. Again, again hypothetical. So 12% and 8% gives you a difference of 20 lakhs. So PPF 8% gives you 43 lakhs. Right. ELSS 12% gives you 63 lakhs. Now even if I drop that, to ten percent, right. you still end up making fifty-two lakhs, right? In in an ELSS, so that's the difference, and that's why equity-linked instruments are always good to have. Correct, because they have the potential to offer you better returns, but over the long run, long run, you have to invest for longer holding periods because shorter holding periods can be more volatile. The fluctuation in returns could be higher, so that's why you have to have. Uh, that patience to wait for longer holding periods and longer right. the better. So uh, ELSS holding for longer period always helps. And Absolutely. you can invest even if you know you uh, overshoot, your overshoot the ATC one and a half lakh limit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Satish, so you know we have this one particular question you know. Uh, is it necessary to contribute at the time of the initial offer when an ELSS scheme is launched to get the tax benefit? Or can an investor come in at any point of time and yet avail of the tax benefit? Is there some, some light that you can throw on that? So there is no need to invest in an ELSS at the point of, you know, the time when the ELSS was launched. launched. And that's the beauty of mutual funds. You can enter at any point of time. Correct. Okay? Uh, they are called as open-ended funds. Right. So you, there is no defined time that you need to enter on this particular day. If you want to invest even daily, right. you can invest every day. Right. So there is no point that you have to invest at the time of uh, the launch. Right. So you can invest at any point of time. The only point I would like to make here is that, like I said earlier, your investments have to be very regular. Correct. Do not invest when you know you get that mail from HR or payroll right. to show your proof of investments, right? Uh, because that could be more harmful. Right. Absolutely. So try to invest over a period of time, right. but be regular. So start from April and invest over the next twelve months. Right. Okay. So being regular always helps because you invest at various points, points. in the market. Absolutely. Because it's a market cycle, markets fluctuate. So it's always good to invest across market cycles, across right. market timings and be regular. So uh, being regular is more important. And again, as I said, you need not invest at the time of launch, you can invest any any time. Perfect. I, th I think that has been really, really helpful for all the people who are, you know, part of this Facebook live session, Satish, you know, and, and before we conclude, you know, we'd like some concluding remarks from your side on the ELSS category and whatever, maybe broad two or three pointers you'd like to leave the audience with. So my take on this is clearly ATC is a must. 
people should invest in um, ATC tax saving instruments. Now, whether you choose ELSS or no is totally based on your risk appetite. But I would definitely, you know, vote for ELSS. Right. But I would say that people who are skeptical about investing in equities can definitely give it a try. Right. The minimum investment amount in, a, in an ELSS is only 500 rupees a month. Oh, okay. So one can just begin an investment. Right. If they feel comfortable, they can keep increasing that limit. Right. Because you have other tax saving options as well. You have your EPF, which gets deducted from your salary and many other, uh, you know, uh, investment options there. If you're not comfortable with equity, start small. Right. But the point I'm trying to make is traditional investments have, you know, uh, right. are on a declining interest rate slope. So you have to be mindful mindful of those facts and not look at it maybe closer to your retirement and say that, you know, my investment planning went wrong. Right. So if you make a beginning today with smaller amounts, so I'm not saying that, you know, right in the beginning put twelve and a half thousand a month. Right. Look at your comfort level and put whatever amount you're comfortable with in ELSS. Start that journey. Correct. Starting that journey is very important. Invest regularly. That's right. The second most important thing yeah. and see how wealth is created because the compounding effect as I have right. mentioned in yeah. the numbers uh, that I, I spoke about is, is proof enough to know that there is wealth creation opportunity when you invest in equities. So that's, that's the message that's um, uh, I would like to go and we are seeing from industry numbers that you know uh, ELSS investments are on the rise. So Absolutely. maybe these are some of the reasons why people are uh, giving their shot at ELSS. Perfect. Thank you so much once again, Satish. Thank you to everybody who's been a part of this session. We will continue having such Facebook live sessions on ELSS and other topics as we go along. Please stay tuned with us at our social media so that you get updates. And do remember and keep in mind, mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.